Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the Arts at EPCC. My name is Dr. Yasmine Flores, and I am your host. And with me today, once again, is my favorite guest of all time. And I tell other guests this. I tell them, actually, you're not my favorite guest. My favorite guest is Ted Carber. Hello, Mr. Carber. How are you? How are you, Yasmine? <laughs> Thank you for having me here. <laughs> Good. Thank you for always coming, and I appreciate having you. And George appreciates it too. This is our plant over here. It was named George by Michael Head from MassCom. George looks very green and full. Yes, he does. He always does. We don't even have to water him. He's that magical. That's the best kind of plant. Yes. Have, yes <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I have you on the show today. I'm, I'm always excited to have you. And because you have three shows coming up that I would like to tell everybody about. Um, first and foremost, the best show, I guess only because everybody's heard of it, Streetcar Named Desire. Exactly. Tennessee Williams' magnum opus probably is what we'd say. Yeah, absolutely. So, so talk to me a little bit about the show and the casting. Um, show is November 12th through 20th, mm -hmm. yes? That's correct. Okay, and um, and so tell me tell me what you all are doing with this version. Well, we're heavy into rehearsals. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things, and I was thinking about this earlier today, as I was thinking about coming here and joining you, mm -hmm. and I was trying to think of some smart things to say about the play. And uh, <laughs> one of the things that did make itself very apparent to me is that I'm amazed, this is my second time to direct the show. I directed it many years ago. Mm -hmm. And it affords actors and directors and lighting designers and costume designers, it affords everyone this remarkable ability to interpret the play anew. Mm. It really does. And if you look at that text and you look at those words, it's not just Marlon Brando's version. Right. It's any actor's version. Sure. Because every time you delve into that dialogue and you go into the world of that play, it's a new experience. And that's the thing I, I think is most amazing. And I guess that's why we consider it to be, you know, a masterpiece or a classic or whatever you want to call it. I have a great cast. Um, we have a, a community theater um, and educator. Uh, from uh, El Paso, whose name is Vanessa Kaiser, who is playing our Blanche. Okay. And uh, a young EPCC student whose name is Celeste Roman, and she's playing uh, Stella. And we have an EPCC alum whom you know, whose name is DeAndre Wright. Of course. And he is playing our Mitch. And a young man who um, is um, part of the community theater circuit. Mm -hmm. He's worked with Greg Thompson uh, mm -hmm. in musical settings. Uh, he's done work in Las Cruces. He's done work here. His name is David Joshua Martinez. It's our first time for him to grace our stage, okay. but he's giving us a very, very wonderful Stanley. So that's the, the core of the show. And then we have a bunch of other students involved and mm -hmm. lots of tech people involved. And of course, right. our wonderful Dom Pagano, who's designing our set and our lights yeah. and all that. I can't wait for that production. And you're absolutely right about Dominic. I always look forward to the sets. Um, and he gets so creative. Mm -hmm. I One day we spent, well, a, a whole episode in about 10 or 15 minutes of that episode was talking about stairways that go nowhere. <laughs> uh -huh. Right? And so I told him, like, the stairwell in The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, the stairwell in Growing Pains, the stairwell, all these stairwells and all these TV shows that you're like, but I want the camera to keep going mm -hmm. so I can see the hallway, right. right? See what the house looks like. Right, exactly. And so it's always fascinating to me um, when I see that built on a stage and, and he does such a phenomenal job. Oh, he does. Yes, absolutely. He is extremely creative. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dom and I have very different tastes in theater. Okay. Uh, he likes a lot more avant-garde theater. He likes a lot more experimental theater. Mm -hmm. And I'm dyed in the wool. You know, we've got to do the classics. These students have got to go through these classics sure. so they understand them. And he is so good to me. He'll. You know, I say, well, I think I'd like to do blah, blah, blah this semester. And he's like, okay, all right. Well, you know, I can hear it in his voice like, oh, no, not that play. Oh, right, right. But he's so good to me. And he's just, you know, he's like, all right, Ted, whatever you want to do, we'll do it. So uh -huh. I feel very fortunate. 
That's wonderful. Yeah, and you guys make a great team. I mean, I've been to several of your previous productions, and it's always a joy to to watch them. Well, thank you. And see this the students right. and their talent. I mean, you know, there is there is a magic to getting um, students that are so raw with such raw talent, right? that are brand new mm -hmm. to theater, that are brand new to acting, all the different stage work, etc., and getting them to really sparkle on right. the stage. It, it really is. And so I owe you, well. you know, just all of us owe you a debt of gratitude because we're just like, I'm always so impressed. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank absolutely. You. I go to the music program sometimes like, Hello? You know, let's take a look at the theater department over here and let's, let's see what they're doing because, that's funny. you know, we need to... Well, that's very kind. Yeah, absolutely. So so you have that coming up. That's mm -hmm. uh, November 12th through 20th, Thursdays and Fridays, Fridays at no, 8 p.m. Fridays and Saturdays. Thank you, Fridays and Saturdays at, at 8, 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. And then Sundays at 2.30. Correct. Awesome. We have an ASL interpretive <laughs> performance on the... Uh, first f on the second Friday mm -hmm. which would be the uh, 18th okay. and then we have another one on the matinee on the 20th those are interpreted for the deaf and hard of hearing communities wonderful yes. very good and they do a wonderful job oh, of that too we couldn't do it without Jennifer Dahlgren she's just amazing yes she is yeah, and yes, the, people, she... the people who work with her are great absolutely so that's going to be a treat mm -hmm. to watch and then you have a spring production coming up right. talk to me about that. We, uh, Dom and I talked a lot about what we wanted to do in the spring and mm -hmm. we did Fun Home last spring which was of course a musical and musicals are too big for us to do every year. Okay. Uh, for one thing they generally take much larger sets, mm -hmm. they're more demanding in costumes and then of course you have the musical component which right. takes an entire cast of people of its own just to make right. it happen. Yeah. So they're a little bit bigger than we want to delve into every semester, every year, but mm -hmm. perhaps next year we'll do another one. Mm -hmm. But we decided we needed to do a comedy in the spring, which is generally what we do. We do something serious in the fall and something lighthearted in the spring. And I had always wanted to do a play by Georges Feydoux, which is called A Flea in Her Ear. And I read it, and I love the play. I think it's very funny, but it has a fairly large cast. Mm -hmm. And Streetcar has a big cast, and I kind of wanted to pare down the size of the cast in the spring after working on Streetcar. And so I found a play by Georges Feydoux, which was actually the first play he wrote that was a great success, and it's called 13 Rue de l'Amour. Okay. And it's a French farce, mm -hmm. and it's set in the 1890s, and it's about a wife who suspects at one point in the play that her husband may be carrying on. Oh. And in perfect French farce fashion, mm -hmm. she goes to find out herself if he's carrying on. Yes. And then the man who's trying to get her to be interested in him follows her along. Oh, and there's no. all kinds of mistaken <laughs> identities and uh, uh, misplaced uh, gentleman's trousers and oh. this fabulous uh, kind of German Fraulein who runs this, this apartment building, quote unquote, where all of these assignations take place. So it's very funny and very cute and it's, How awesome. it's going to afford students the experience of doing a play they haven't done before by doing mm -hmm. a French farce, which is an entirely different kind of performance level and a different kind of, perf of style of acting. Right. So it'll be very fun. As you talk about that plot, that sounds like a funny thing happened on the way to the forum. You know, funny thing happened on the way to the forum is a farce in a lot of ways. Yeah. And so it's the same kind of story. Yeah, absolutely. Because you said trousers and oh, there yeah. is a changing of costumes and suddenly the man is pretending to be the woman. <laughs> It's all just, and it all, and I remember years and years ago when I was at UT El Paso, I had a professor who said to me, I defy you in one sentence to tell me what happens in the importance of being earnest. And that's kind of the sign of a farce. If oh. you can't describe it in one sentence and make any sense of it, it's probably going to be either a comedy or a farce, and it's very true. Oh. And you cannot describe this play in one <laughs> sentence because there's too much uh, insanity that goes on mm -hmm. on the stage. Right, absolutely. So it's very fun. It's a very fun show. Well, that's great. And that's uh, right before spring break. Right. Right. Um, the two weekends before spring break. Okay. Awesome. Um, give me those dates. I believe it's March 3rd through March 12th, I believe, is that the, are the dates. That sounds right. And yes. it would be a Friday, uh -huh. Saturday at 8 and Sunday at 2.30. Very good. Awesome. Well, I'm looking forward. And you haven't started casting for that yet. I did. Oh. Actually, we did something new. Oh. We, uh, we decided to try and cast the entire season. And so... 
uh, we had a, a good number of people show up for auditions, mm -hmm. and I was able to cast both shows. So they Wonderful. are cast, and uh, we do have, as I said, community theater actors in Streetcar. Okay. But in 13 Rue de la Mort, it's almost exclusively students. Oh, that's great. So that'll be very fun. We have one community theater actor in the, in the show. So okay. I think it'll be very fun, and it'll be a really, great experience for a lot of these students who are in streetcar mm -hmm. and who will translate their talents to 13 Rue de l'Amour in the spring and it'll be a whole different kind of learning experience. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful. Well, awesome. So we, of course, we're talking about, yeah, March of 2023 right. coming up. And then you just briefly told me as we were walking in here that there's a summer production. Correct. Yes, talk to me a little bit about that. Last year, um, Inclusion and diversity came to me, and we had a meeting together, and, and I met with Lee Vasquez, mm -hmm. and um, I'm part of that committee, part sure. of that diversity committee. Mm -hmm. And we were, I was in that meeting, and they were saying, if you have any ideas about things we could do that would involve, you know, diversity and inclusion, mm -hmm. and I said, well, I would very much like to be, you know, part of an LGBTQ production mm -hmm. in June. I've always wanted to do that, and if you all would be interesting and interested in partnering with us, I think it'd be a great thing to do. And they took me up on it. Good. And so yeah. this last June, we did a production of Kiss of the Spider Woman by That's Manuel right. Puig. Yes. And we did it in conjunction with diversity and inclusion. Uh, we were also associated with the Tejano Food Bank, which is what we charged. We charged a non-perishable food item okay. and donated all that to the Tejano Tejano Food Bank. That's wonderful. Uh, Tejano Passport was involved and the ASL uh, interpreter program. Okay. And so it was a very big collaborative effort and we're gonna do that again in this coming June. We're gonna do another LGBTQ show. I haven't chosen which one I want to do yet, but we'll do that in June and celebrate Gay Pride here in El Paso with another production. Wonderful, that's really great. I, I, you know, it always warms my heart when when we compare things, right? Yeah. Um, there's so many different offices across EPCC and organizations, and a lot of times, and this happens in all organizations. That's right. <laughs> okay, where it's like the left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing, right. and it's like, I didn't know we did that. Um, and so I, I'm always happy to hear when several offices come together, and so that pairing with diversity, that makes perfect sense. We um, we really strive to work with other programs on campus. Yes, we you do. We really do. Yes, we, do. Uh, we work frequently with the ASL program, the interpreter program, interprets numbers of our shows. Mm -hmm. uh, we, um, Lisa Miller, uh, art uh, coordinator out at TM, uh -huh. um, she gives our productions, mm -hmm. uh, she gives her students copies of the script and they read the script and then yeah. they create artwork based on that and then we choose three of those for our poster designs. <gasps> so our poster designs come from EPCC students. That's um, wonderful. We work frequently mm -hmm. with MassCom and yeah. with the video production and wonderful, wonderful Michael Head. Yes. So we're so fortunate to have so many talented people. We work with you, we work with music. Yes. All I, I think Yasmin probably, every time she sees my name on that phone, she probably breaks out into a cold sweat thinking, what's he going to ask me right. to do now? <laughs> He's going to want the music to some obscure show right. that he wants me to find the melody for. Right. I already know what it's. <laughs> right. Exactly. She probably thinks I don't think I should answer the phone. No, no, it's always it's always a pleasure. Uh, I know that we've had our conversations about Tchaikovsky. Oh yes. Um, we had I can't remember what uh, play that was for. What um, uh, I think it was Romancers. Oh, okay. That was during the pandemic. Yes, yeah, and you were asking me, I think, about 1812 Overture mm -hmm. and Sleeping Beauty. There were several Tchaikovsky pieces involved there, and I don't remember if you settled on Schumann or what it was. Uh, what did we do? Not oh, we did Edvard Grieg. Oh, that's right. We did uh, the Pier Gint Suite. We oh, did parts nice. of the Pier Gint Suite, Good. and it worked fine. It was Perfect. very fun. Some of yeah. it's light and airy. Yes, it is, uh, and it's for a play. Right, that's yes. exactly right. <laughs> that's, yeah. One of a little different, a different right. ilk, but it's for yes. a play, that's uh -huh, right. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, I'm, yeah, I'm always glad to work with you, Ted, wow. and it's always a pleasure. So this is three really awesome, and I would like to say, I would like to give some credit to our own department in music, because we actually do the same thing for the faculty grant posters. We get an art student, um, and right as of right now, it consists of me literally going down the hallway and going, I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm, not, I'm done. <laughs> they, they have won the competition, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, so I've talked to um, Brack and Frank and Sadella and all those folks um, just to, to discuss, like, do you mind if I, can you talk to the students, see if it's okay with them? And so we will be featuring um, one of those paintings. Uh, I'm sorry, it's a sculpture this time. Oh, wow. It's a really awesome sculpture. Um, the student's name is Alyssa Bibo or Bibo. And she, I walked past one day and it just called to me. I just thought it was so stunning. It's hands that are coming out along with a face Oh, wow. And so, yeah, we took a picture of that, and that's what's going to be featured on the poster. So that's coming up pretty soon for, for our faculty grant. But we're not here to discuss music. Ted. But I will say, Yasmin, yes. I always love the posters that the music department creates. You're so sweet. Oh, I really do. I think they're great. And I, your music at EPCC, uh -huh. simple, yeah. but I, every time I walk by it, I think, gosh, that's a really good poster. Thank you. I wish I, I designed thought of that. those. Yeah. <laughs> really, really yeah. good. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think appreciate it, works really, it. It does what it's supposed to do. Exactly. Straightforward and to the point. Right. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, we do have some new posters that just rolled out, but they haven't been added everywhere. So we still have some of the old ones. But this time I just went with a student's picture. And it's him holding a guitar. And I was like, yes. Hey, it that's, works. It you know, lures them in. <laughs> right? You don't need to reinvent the wheel every time <laughs> exactly. you do it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. exactly. So it works very well. But well, so now talk to me a little bit about um, obviously you're still in the tenure process and Correct. to explain to everybody at home what that is, is that these folks and I point to Ted because I am no longer tenure track. That's right. I am tenured. You are a tenured, tenured faculty member. Yes. And so we all went through that process, but it's basically it's almost like a huge application. Right. It's like a second application. So you get the job and then you have to sort of prove yourself, right? right? And so it's a five year process of, of pulling together all these application materials and you're, you're in the middle of this. And I'm in my fourth year. Oh, already. I'm in my fourth year. My good, so next year's the big one. That's right. That's awesome. That's that was right. fast. You know, it has gone very quickly. <laughs> At the beginning of the process, I thought, oh my gosh, it's going to be so long and arduous, and I'm going to, I'm going to, blah, blah, blah. And then I woke up the next day and was like, I'm, it's my fourth year. Yeah, what right. happened? I yeah. Know. That's awesome. Yeah. So I think, I mean, y you know, you've, you've done such a stunning job through, through the past few years. Oh, and, thank you. Um, yeah, absolutely. So in looking ahead, as you look ahead at, at um, what, what, what are things that you would like to do at the college? Do you have other plays, other musicals? Well, I do think uh, uh, Dom and I, and Dom is always part of the equation as far as I'm concerned. I'm not the kind of director who goes and says, we will do this play. Okay. I always take him mm -hmm. scripts and say, do you think this is feasible? Sure. Can we build this? Uh -huh. Can we cast this? You know, right. Do you think we can cast this? When, we, when I chose Streetcar, that was one of the concerns. I said, I mean, we sat down and talked. Do we think we can cast this? Mm -hmm. Can you build it? And will it kill you if you build it? Build right. it. You know, what I mean, because right. he does lots of the work himself. Yeah. And uh, and so, what I'd like to do is, I would like, with Dom's input, to create a more structured um, formula for our seasons. And so, sure. every other year. To, to do a musical. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think one of the reasons I'd like to do musicals is not just because they're fun, but because they draw in a different crowd of people. Yes, they do, and, absolutely. And we can get the community to commit to attending a show that's a musical much mm -hmm. more easily than we can get them to commit to a straight show. Yeah. So it'll open up that, that avenue of uh, audience attendance, I think. Um, we're, we've had such an overwhelming response to Streetcar. Yeah. Uh, the schools have reached out to us, the public wow. schools. We have, in fact, we have added uh, a daytime performance of the show. Oh my goodness. Uh, for a local high school because uh, one of the, the theater teacher at that school mm -hmm. uh, contacted me and said, if you'll do a 10 o'clock in the morning show on one of these dates, I can fill your theater. And so they're gonna fill our theater That's one awesome. morning. That's awesome. And then we're doing 
I feel so sorry for these poor actors. I'm going to make them do a 7 o'clock show that night because then we're bringing in more high school people. Oh, my goodness. Uh, and then the following Thursday. So this is the would be essentially the dress final dress rehearsal, okay. which will be Thursday the 10th. And then Thursday the 17th, we're going to do the same thing again at night, not in the morning. So we, mm -hmm. I would like that to become more of a standard process for right. us. We right, do right. these additional shows yeah. for high school students to come mm -hmm. in and see what we do, to be interested in our program. Yeah and to see what, what kind of theater we produce. Yeah. Um, because we've had such a, a, a large response to mm -hmm. Streetcar, I'd like to do something that is classical mm -hmm. in the fall. Mm -hmm. Now that opens the door to lots of different kinds. We could do a Greek classic, we could do you sure. know, Renaissance, we could do um, you know, modern theater, which would be Ibsen or Chekhov yeah. or something like that. We could do, and then in the spring, be more experimental with either a kind of a ridiculous comedy mm -hmm. or do something that's more off the wall, maybe uh, UNESCO or something like that. That sure. would be, people would not expect to see. Yeah. So that's kind of what I'd like to do is to organize our cyst, our, our cyst, our, our uh, season choices in a mm -hmm. kind of systematic form. There you go. Yeah. So that they, so people were, oh, they'll be doing a comedy or they're gonna do something off the wall yeah. or something. And of course, we've started using that black box space in the- Yes, you have. In, at Via Verde. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I want to continue doing that and directing small shows in there. That's wonderful. I So I went to the show mm -hmm. in the summer That's in right. the black box. That's right. And I enjoyed it thoroughly. And so it's, it's very nice, it's intimate. Mm -hmm. And it, what is the maximum seating post COVID? Uh, we can probably get 35 people in there. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and it was, what I loved about what you did, they were short little scenes, mm -hmm. um, very straightforward and to the point. It allows for people if they need to go in and out, right? Exactly. You know, just hold until the next scene. Exactly. And then, and you're really close to the actors mm -hmm. too. You're sitting right in front of them. So there's no need to shout. There's no need to project, right? right? Anything like that. And so it is a it is a lovely space and you control the air conditioning in there because we, <laughs> <laughs> we, we used to uh, rehearse the band oh. in there one semester. Um, that was hilarious. We, so we bought a red dolly. We would put the drum set on the red dolly, <laughs> get the red dolly into the elevator, have to lift the dolly a little bit because of the way the elevator is positioned, go up to the top floor, haul everything in there, unpack everything off the dolly, then about 10 minutes before class is done, start packing up the dolly again, take everything downstairs. Now, did you, were you able to get a person in the elevator with the dolly or did you have to push the button and let the door They had show? to stand on the dolly. That's nice. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. lovely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, that's one of the problem, not a problem. It's one of the artistic challenges of that black box yes. space. You can't get scenery up there. Oh, so we can't build right. big, scen big scenery up there. Yeah. So the, the, the plays that we choose, or uh -huh. the plays that I choose, yeah. have to be plays that can be done with absolutely minimal scenery. Yeah. Right, right. Uh, we didn't have anything for the show you saw. That's we had a right. table and some chairs and that was it. You know, but, but I, I really appreciated the actors have to work that much harder, right. right? To really help us with our imaginations. And they did such a great job. Um, the What was the name of the one in the art gallery? Uh, that is called uh, Gallery Piece, okay. uh, Las Meninas, which okay. is, and they're looking at a painting of, the, of Las Meninas. Okay. And yeah, yeah. it was. That was so great because literally, I mean, they're, they're staring at the audience, mm -hmm. but they're pretending that there's a wall right in front of them. Right. And they're just looking at this painting. And, and so it's such a, it's almost like television in that mm -hmm. respect because you have such an intimate view of their faces right. right right in front of you and so it is it was it was just really everything was very well done i think that um w with time as time progresses you know maybe you could work out a small shop there to build a few small things mm -hmm. up there but yes you're right that does get a little complicated <laughs> I, I, years ago i heard the stories of one of my predecessors, I don't know which one it was, who would have uh -huh. students bring giant set pieces up those flights of stairs, <gasps> four flights of stairs. Oh. And I thought, that's just a disaster waiting to happen. Yeah. And so we don't even consider that. And, and you know, um, 
one of the really good things about it, Yasmin, is mm -hmm. it's a whole different kind of education for students. Right. You're not on the forum stage, which is out at Trans Mountain, with right. that you know that proscenium opening and that yes. separation from the. You're not. You don't have that experience. Right. And it takes a whole different kind of fortitude to be right in front of an a, a, an yes, audience it member does. and be able to act. Right. I could have started making funny faces. Oh at yeah. Them. And they would have had to have ignored me. That's right. I mean, that's I was being, exactly right. I was being respectful. Uh, mind you, I was trying to take pictures for your sake, and there was a lady next to me that was looking at me <laughs> taking these pictures, and she was like, "What is this lady doing over here?" Oh, that's funny. <laughs> right. So, yeah, it was very funny. Um, but I enjoyed it thoroughly, and and I always enjoy working, seeing your students, and and the beautiful job that they've done. And I can think of plays over over the years that I've I've truly truly wow. enjoyed. Well, thank you. Ted, as we wrap up, let me ask you this question. What can students do if they want to be a theater major? Um, they can reach out. They mm -hmm. can talk to me. Uh, my office number is 915-831-3205. Okay. Uh, they can reach out to Don Pagano, who's out at Trans Mountain. And I'm ashamed to say I don't know his office number, but his email address is dpagano, P-A-G-A-N-O, at epcc.edu. Very good. Uh, they can email him. They can call me. Uh, they can call the dean's office here. Yes. At, uh, here, at, and you would call the dean's office for communication and performing arts. Yes. If you call the EPCC uh, operator, they can direct you to that line. Twenty three ninety five. There we go. Twenty three ninety five. You're better <laughs> yes. than I am. I forget that. I'm yeah. surprised because I probably call it five times a day. <laughs> <I know. coughs> so they can do any of those things. Mm -hmm. They can learn about our program on the EPCC website. Yes, they going can. To my EPCC mm -hmm. and looking up theater. Mm -hmm. um, so we're more than happy to talk to anybody who wants to study theater Absolutely. here at EPCC. Yes, and your your email is probably, I'm sorry, your website is probably www.epcc.edu slash academic slash theater. Probably, yes. Yes. And it's T-E-R, not T-R-E. T-H-E-A, T E R theater. Which is the American spelling. Correct. Yes, Correct. the English spelling. So Correct. awesome. And then your email is T Carber? Uh, T Carber J. Okay. At epcc.edu. I'm a junior, but they lopped off that R. Oh, right. <laughs> so okay. it's just T Carper J. Okay. Awesome. Well, it's always a pleasure having you on the show, and I can't wait to do this again. I need to bring Dominic back so we can talk about more stairwells to nowhere. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> That's funny. Yes. And so we look forward to seeing you in November and in March. Thank you so much, Yasmin. Thank you, Ted. We appreciate you. That's and so thanks, everybody. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>